Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at one of my favorite applications, and that's a calendaring application called Fantastical 2. And so this is a part of my favorite app series, and so I'm just kind of going through different applications that I like uh, for different functions. Uh, earlier in the series I talked about things as a uh, task management application, and this is my favorite calendaring application. Now one of the beauties of Fantastical 2 is that it actually started as an iOS app and then backed into a Mac app. And so the beauty of that is it took some of the great functionality uh, that had to be available on the iOS application and brought it over to the Mac and did it in a really, uh, really great way. And so this is how I prefer to use uh, the calendaring application. So let's just start with the interface and let me give you an idea of what it looks like. So as you can see here, uh, this is the Fantastical interface and one of the things I like is I like this split view here. On the left hand side I've got a view of the calendar overview for the month with then all of the different events that I have coming up. And right now I, the only thing I have is different holidays. I haven't added a calendar to show you yet. Um, but just wanted to show you that this is a really nice feature. So I've got all of these things down the side. And if you look in this calendar up here, you can see I've got uh, areas where I've got the little dots that match these events. And if I just hover, hover over these different calendar events, it'll show me what's happening that day just by hovering over it. So they've really thought of a lot of details here. Uh, one of the things you'll also notice is that today is always in blue. And it's always uh, circled in blue here and also on the calendar to the right. I can scroll through the years just by kind of going like this, and you notice everything changes as I do that forward and backward. Now, on the right here, I've got a full calendar view. And so what I can do is get a secondary view of my calendar uh, in addition to what I have here on the side. So I can view by day, and so this is the today view. And you'll see that I've got uh, the hours of the day here, and I've got this little red bar uh, that goes through here and this just tells me what time it is and how the time kind of goes through the day so I can kind of see what's coming up next and you can see it says I have no items today I can go by week view as well and so this gives me the whole week and again in blue here is the day that I'm working on so I always kind of know in context where I'm at and then I've got my time scale on both sides too so that no matter where I look I can I can check that out then I've got my month view and that's where I was before, where this shows everything uh, viewed it by the month. And then I've got a year view, and this is nice because it gives me kind of a heat map of all the different events that I have going on. Uh, again, you can see today is in bold over here, but you notice all these different yellow areas, and if I hover over them, it shows me what's going on on those days. And you can see these are just right now all the holidays, but as I get these days filled up, it moves from yellow to red, so it gets kind of orange to red to show me how full my calendar is and whether I've got events there. So this is kind of a neat view to get an idea of your year if you need to take a look at it. Again, the nice thing is, is all of this over here stays the same so that I can take a look at what's happening today and all the different activities. I've got coming up for the week. So let's go ahead and go back to the month view. So that gives you an idea of what this interface looks like. Uh, I've also got the search up here where I can find events if I want to. So let me just type in, you know, April. And so as I start typing, it starts to pull up all the different events that are coming up. And you can see it found April Fool's Day for the entire uh, next several years, and it just keeps going on and on and on. All right, so let me just go ahead and uh, close that down. So what's really nice is I can quickly search my calendar as well to find what I'm looking for. So now that we've got an idea of the overview, uh, let me just show you how to set up a new calendar. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to add your own calendars to Fantastical 2. So if I just come down here to the gear icon, I would just go to Preferences, and it brings up this Preference window here. Let me just go ahead and put that in the center. And you can see we've got this area that says Accounts. And if I just go into Accounts here, this shows all my different calendaring accounts. Now to add an account, I would just uh, click this plus button here, and you can see these are all the different calendaring accounts that are supported. You can see that Fantastical has you covered with a whole bunch of different options here. You can even, if you wanted to add your server calendar, you would do that over here under Other CalDAV Account and add that in there. Now one thing I do want to say is that if you do have uh, two-factor authentication set up for iCloud or any of your other services, especially in iCloud, you'll have to go to iCloud and make a app-specific password in order for uh, Fantastical to be able to access your iCloud account. So I, I'm not gonna, I don't have the scope here to show you that, but just uh, if you go into your iCloud account online, you'll see where it says app specific passwords, and that'll give you a password you could put in here. So in our case, I'm just gonna put in a Google account. So I'm gonna select that and say continue. 
And so now it's going to take me to the web, and it's going to ask me what kind of account I want to use. I'm just going to say Add Account here. And what I'm going to do is put in one of my other accounts. And say Next, and sign in. And so then it asks me if I want to let Fantastical have access to all of this information. I'm going to say Allow. And it's going to go ahead and load this particular calendar. And now my calendar is added. And you can even see behind here, it says Google Account Authorization Complete. You can close this window. So we're going to close that window and come back in here. Now you'll notice I've got the option to enable the account. I can put a description on it. Uh, right now it says Google. I can put whatever I want. I can choose to refresh the calendars by push or every so many minutes or manually. And I can also manage delegates if I want to. And so if I've got different uh, delegates in here that I wanted to add, uh, I could do that as well. In this case, I don't have any. But you can enable users that you want to see these different calendars and all that kind of information. I'm just going to say Done. And then you can hide or show your shared calendars uh, right here on the Google website. So it even gives you a link there to help you figure that out. So that shows you how to get the accounts uh, set up and put into Fantastical. Now let's take a look at how you actually manage your calendars. Fantastical has a really neat feature that allows you to manage your calendars in an easy way. Now let me just come up here to Calendars in our Preferences here. And one of the things you'll notice is we have what's called Calendar Sets. Now what this does is it lets you set up customized calendar views so that when you have multiple calendars like from iCloud or Google and all of that sort of thing, you can choose which ones you want to see with these different calendaring sets. So for instance, if, you're, uh, if you've got a work type calendar and you've got multiple calendars for work, you could set up a work calendar set, you could set up a home calendar set, and then that way your calendar is not crowded with all kinds of activities and events when all you really want to see is what's happening at work when you're at work or home stuff when you're at home. And Instead of having to go in and manually you know, selecting or deselecting accounts, you can just set these calendar sets up ahead of time. So let me show you how that works. If I just hit the plus here, I've got this new calendar set. And let me just call it, uh, let's just call it a work. Okay, so now I've got this work calendar set. Now what I do is I go through and choose which calendars I want to view. So let's say I don't want to view home because I'm not doing anything for home. I'll keep reminders. Uh, I've got uh, holidays in the United States. Uh, that's fine. I can leave that on. Uh, I'll take off uh, contacts. I don't need that. Uh, I can take off these local U.S. holidays from that. Uh, this is my bank info. I don't need that one. And I really don't need these anniversaries and birthdays because that'll just clutter up my interface. So now you can see I've got work, reminders, Google, and then Google holidays in the United States. I think that's good for my work calendar set. Uh, now I can choose the default calendar. It can either be work or I could choose the actual Google calendar if I want to do that. It depends on which one would be the default when I add a new event. So when I'm actually adding events, where do I want it to get placed? I'm going to go ahead and leave it as work. And then I can have my default uh, reminders list. And so in this case, I do want the reminder. Uh, from general because uh, that's going to put it in the reminders app on my Mac and then I can also say automatically activate at location which means that what I can do is I can set up the ability to have my calendar switch over so that when I get to work it'll automatically switch to my work calendar set so if I hit this you can see that I add a location to activate this so let me just put um, Let's go ahead and put an infinite loop. Let's go ahead and put an Apple there. So when I get to Apple, and you can see that it's going to put in that address, and it's going to allow me to put in whether I'm arriving or leaving when I want this to change. And so I want it to change when I arrive at Apple. It's going to change to my work calendar. And you can see I get the little location icon here as well that shows that that is going to change for me. And it's a, it's a calendar that's set by location. So again, a really nice feature that's built in here so that when you open your Mac, it'll automatically switch to the calendar that you want to use. So now that we've got an idea of how calendar sets work, let me just show you what it looks like in the calendar itself. I'm just going to pop this down. And you'll notice down below here, I've got this little drop-down menu. And if I just click on this, you see I can look at all calendars, my calendar set, which is the one I had before, or my work calendar. And if I ever want to change them, I just click Manage Calendars, and it'll take me right back into this area here. So let me come back down. So let's go ahead and change it to our work calendar. And you can see that now everything has changed. You can see that now I've got the actual Google holidays that are here because those were in green, and my other ones in pink went away so that those aren't showing up anymore. 
And again, when I get my laptop to the location, it'll automatically switch over to work. So these calendar sets are, are a really great feature and a powerful way to have your calendars managed for you. Now, let me just show you, uh, once we've got that now, how do you add events to your calendar? Okay, so to add events to Fantastical, you just come up here and hit the plus. And one of the great things about adding events in Fantastical is the fact that it uses plain language. Now, Fantastical was one of the first apps on iOS to use that type of functionality. Uh, and so it really makes it nice to add events in where it fills in the fields for you. So, for instance, if I said I wanted to have, let's say, lunch with, let's say, Mike, and you notice that it gives me this little highlight and I have this little drop down because it notices that there's a mic in my address book and then I can say at noon and you can see it changes that over there at and let's say Apple Inc. And you notice it drops down all the information for Apple I've got contacts and locations and let's go ahead and put in the location and once I hit that it adds the address to my actual uh, event and notice that, so it's got lunch and you can see it circles it to show that it does have a location fix on it. So now I've got this entire thing filled out for me and I didn't have to do anything. Now what I'm going to do is instead of today I'm going to say on Friday. And notice it changes it to Friday right here and you can see over here it's changed it to Friday as well and it's got that lunch set up. Now what I can do in here is I can set up a number of things. I can hit this and decide which calendar I want it at. Work, home, Google. Uh, in this case I'm going to leave it at work. I can set up alerts if I want to um, for it to remind me uh, so many minutes before the event or whatever. I can say, say I want it to remind me 30 minutes before. So now I've set up that particular alarm uh, with this appointment. And you'll notice uh, down here I've got this little arrow. If I just hit this, it extends it. And I can do things like add invitees. I can put a URL on there. I can add notes. I can do a lot of number, a, a bunch of different things to this. If I had an all-day event, I would uh, just click on this. And you notice if I hit all day, it's going to change the time on there as well. And it will put it at the top of the day, not in a specific time span. And I can also set up a repeating calendar if I want to, every day, every week, every month, or even custom. And if I just hit custom, I get this uh, pop-up here that allows me to select daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, every so many days, and all that kind of information. I'm just going to say cancel because I don't want that to happen. Now, all i got to do is say add event. And now the event has been added. And you can see I've got my lunch over here. It's right in my calendar. I've got lunch with Mike at this particular location, all set and ready to go. Now what I could do too, if I just uh, control click on it, and you can see I can change, look, change the calendar I want to put it on. I can copy, cut, duplicate as reminder, delete, email the event where I can send it to a friend and they can put it on their calendar. Or if I just double click on it, I get this little pop out window here that shows me the event. And you can see that the event has a calendar on it as well to show me exactly where it is so that I can get that information. And if I just uh, take a look at the little pop down, it just gives me an expanded view of the information as well. Let me just click off of that. I can do the same thing over here. If I just click on it here, I get a pop-up over here on the side. Now, another thing that I can do is in, in, in terms of adding events is I can also add reminders. And so I can say, for instance, remind me to go to the store. Let's just say I want to remind me to go to store. See, it says go to store. Notice this little uh, box is shifted over now with the check mark. That means it's a reminder. And I can say remind me on the day. I can say remind me at a location. And I can add a location in here. And it'll, it'll actually pop up the reminder just like it does in the Reminders app. And if I just hit this little bar here, I can add a URL and notes, put a priority in and all of that. And I can add the reminder. And now it's on my reminder list. Now, if I ever want to view my reminder lists, I just come over here and hit this little checkbox here, and you'll see that my reminders list comes up, and I've got my little check mark there on when to check it off and all of that information. Or if I just uncheck this, I go back to the calendaring view. So that gives you an idea of how to set up your information in Fantastical. Now, another thing you can do on the Mac, just a little tip if you want to, is you could set up dictation if you'd rather just dictate the information in there. Uh, let me just show you real quickly how to do that. If you come to System Preferences, you want to go to Keyboards here. And you can see in Keyboards, there's Dictation. If I just turn Dictation on, 
and you can see, does it, do I want to use enhanced dictation? Okay, and this is where information is not sent to Apple. It happens right on the app. And so there's a download that's required to make that happen. I'm just going to say not now for our purposes. And uh, it says when you dictate with enhanced dictation, you say what you say is sent to Apple and converted into text. That's fine. I'm going to let it go to Apple. Later I'll do that enhanced dictation, and that's really a good idea to do. And all I've got to do is press the uh, function key twice, or I can set it up for anything I want. Okay, so now that I've got that set up, let me just come up here, and I've got my bar there, and I'm going to hit the function key twice. Lunch with Sally on Thursday at 2 p.m. And I'm just going to say done. And you can see it automatically fills all that information in there. I can add the event. And now the event has been added right there. And I've got two lunches in a row. And you see that it shows on the side. <clears throat> So that gives you an idea of how to use Fantastical and get started with it. There's a bunch of other features, but I'll cover those in part two on this series. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.